When I first started playing Dune Spice Wars, two of the things I had the most trouble with was the land shred council and espionage. So I thought I'd delve into a little bit more and uh, try to understand a little better. Uh, so I made this video and hopefully it'll help somebody else out too. So with that, I'm going to get started with the, looking at the screens. I thought I would take a look at the espionage screen from the eyes of the smugglers. So off to the left here is the faction breakdown, what I know about them. The House of Trades, House Arconan, and Freeman. And initially it gives me like the resources, what they are. If I add an agent, like for House Arconan, I'm getting I know what their counselors are, what some of their advantages are. And as I add more agents, I will get more information. Uh, one thing about adding agents to uh, infiltrate the other factions, other major factions, is it increases your intel production and your infil infiltration production. So that's something to keep in mind. Up here, this is tells me this tells me when my next agent will be available. It's 10.09 in game time, whatever that stands for. I don't know if it's days or, or what or hours. Um, I've got a total of five out of ten agents available to me right now, and those five are already assigned. I've got, I've got counterintelligence slots, which uh, reduces the uh, effectiveness of, of uh, intelligence operations against me. I also got, there's also four infiltrations I can use. Arrakis is one of my favorites. It gives me access to the points of interest on the map. I can research them. I also, it also gives me more authority production and intel production. The Spacing Guild more focuses on manpower production and intel production. I find myself as the Freeman using this more than any of the other ones because I seem to have uh, manpower problems when I'm playing the Freeman. Chome gives you more Solari production and Intel production. Uh, Landsrad, that's more of a House of Trades interest than anybody else. It increases your influence production, which is important to House of Trades, and it increases Intel production. Over here is something I didn't even look at when I when I first started playing the game, and that's missions. And they go from anywhere from easy to medium to hard. You can even assassinate the leaders of other houses if you meet the requirements. The thing about these is they are not available for immediate use. They have to plan them. You have to plan them out in advance. So this one takes 50 uh, intel. This one would take uh, what is that? This one takes 100 intel. So it takes intel and sometimes uh, Solari, and sometimes there's added requirements as well. So if I want to use this one, I have to queue it up and then wait for it to be ready. And I'm going to put my game on fast until I get this queued up. Once the operation is ready, this bar will turn green, and this this will be available also for use. So when it's available, you get a green bar with a green check mark. If I want to use it, click on it, and then I will find a uh, neutral area to use it on, like the QNIT. <laughs> and now I'm getting the, the benefits from that operation. So not too hard to, to use. This grants me vision on the region and, and recons its points of interest. So, not too hard to use. That one's easy. So that really is the espionage screen in a nutshell. It, I, as far as I can tell, it's identical for all, all four of the factions. So, that's the only viewpoint I'm going to uh, show on for uh, for the espionage screen. When you first get a notification of a, a Landstrad Council meeting, uh, you get the, an idea you'll be told what the resolutions are, but you won't be able to vote on them yet. And this up here in the upper right hand corner will tell you how many days it is before the voting will begin. There will always be three resolutions to vote on, so you've got time to think about it. Over here on the right, it shows you what resolutions are currently in effect and will be replaced. There are also positions in the land strad which you can take. Speak of the council, which will give you more influence. Judge of the Council, the Dune Governorship, which if you hold that for 60 days will let you win the game, a Water Sellers Union, and the Eye of the Council. And with all these, you've got to have a, a high Landstrad, land, Landstrad, Landstrad standing, which means that the smugglers and the freemen are not eligible for those because they don't have a Landstrad standing in the game. So it basically comes down to House Harkonnen and House Atreides and House Harkonnen. Once voting is open in the council, you'll have uh, six days to vote, change your votes, and think it over before, before the voting ends. 
For, mo for resolutions, you can either decline, support, or choose a target and cast votes. So for the House of Trades, if I wanted uh, if I wanted 100% land spread, land spread standing losses for actions against other factions, if I wanted to tone down the House of Corner, I'd leave them nominated, and I could throw in my 100 votes there. The thing with the influence is I can also use influence to bolster my my votes and if I really went all in on that I could really hammer the house of the house Harkonnen with that so once the votes are cast you can dismiss it and wait for the results and as you can see my resolution passed by a wide margin so that's good for me and bad for house Harkonnen now if they attack somebody they're going to get hammered in the land shred their standing will take a significant hit and this shows you right here that that resolution is in effect as the smugglers the land spread council screen is a little bit different as you can see they do not have uh, any votes although all they can use is influence but before voting begins they can place bounties on resolutions and it costs a hundred salari so if I wanted to influence the vote on on the diplomatic congresses I could put a bounty and give five salari to whoever votes in favor of that per vote and that's one effective way they can uh, exert influence in the in the land spread council once voting begins you can see the bounties they placed on the different resolutions also they can take their influence and throw it in behind this resolution also and uh, have a good chance of getting something passed between the smugglers influence vote and the bounty they placed on that resolution it passed I'm not sure where the payment for the bounty comes from but it did not come out of the smugglers pocket but the smugglers can greatly influence the outcome resolutions between bounties and influence there's really not much difference between the Fremen uh, Lansard Council screen and the uh, smugglers the difference being that they can't place bounties on resolutions, so they're even weaker in the land spread um, council than the smugglers are. About all they can do, well, all they can do is use influence for votes, and that's it. Last but not least is House Harkonnen. Their land spread uh, screen is identical to House of Trades. Uh, they might have a few less votes than House of Trades does, but they can still support or decline resolutions. They can choose targets and they can vote and they can add influence to their votes if they want to, although they don't have any influence to add right now in this particular case. So that covers the basics of the espionage screen and the land shred screens. I'm sure there's a few things I missed or maybe a few perks that add a few variations to the screens, but overall, this is uh, how they work. So this is where I'm going to end the video. So if you liked it, please like it down below. And if you want to see more in this video series or have a comment, please leave a comment down below. This channel is all about, mostly about space strategy games, but every now and then I'll throw in a game I like, like the Dune Spice Wars. So I have a, uh, I have a video, a card I'll put up at the end of this video that links to a review of this game and, and the four factions and some of their strengths and weaknesses. And I'll also put a link to that in the description below. So until next time, this is Rich from Loner Strategy Games. I'll see you later. Bye.